Hey everyone, Seth at Hub City Vintage, and this week I wanted to share a project, well, technically two projects, that I just finished up for a client. Now, I'll be the first to say that I have no real interest in modded watches, and my goal when restoring vintage Seikos is to keep them as original as possible. Of course, on the occasion when original parts can't be found, we will track down the best aftermarket components available, usually from Aaron at Seikosis or Adrian at Vintage Time Australia, to complete a watch that couldn't be finished otherwise. But even then, it's as a last resort. And as those parts are meant to replace the unavailable original parts, what I should probably say is I have no interest in customizing vintage Seikos. I'm not disparaging the modding community, and clearly there is an entire cottage industry devoted to personalizing, mostly vintage Seiko divers, to your exact specifications, oftentimes even mimicking historic models from other lauded brands. I say, to each his own, and do what you enjoy, but for me, I enjoy keeping them as original as possible, and that's why today I'm going to share how I broke that rule, but maybe not really. I received both of these watches from one of our regular clients recently, and you likely recognize them. On the left, we have a 6309-7049. This is a non-SUA turtle model, uh, meaning that it's uh, after 81 in production. Of course, part of production was moved to Hong Kong after 81. That would include the case components. The movement was assembled in Japan and then sent to Hong Kong to be cased. Uh, and so this one is likely 82. I think it is. Uh, it is March of 82 by the serial, but a beautiful non-SUA turtle example there. And on the right-hand side here, we have a 6309-7290 that I also think is from 82. Let's see. Yep. October of 82. Uh, now, this one is a bit of a transitional model, sort of short-lived. Uh, wasn't around very long. Short production. Um, and it's a transitional model that you can see really sort of the evolution from the 6309 into the 7002 and latter SKX models. But a beautiful watch. I think they really did a good job sort of streamlining that larger C case uh, from the turtle, giving it a, a bit of a sharper edge, lower profile, and of course moving from these soft uh, round luminous plots into these cornered and, and sharp luminous plots on this model. But hands are the same, dial markings are mostly the same. Uh, and of course, these two are both just beautiful examples. They arrived bone stock, original crystals, um, only the straps had been changed, uh, but really just in great shape, had been very well taken care of. However, they showed up with friends. Here we have a 6306-8000 and a 6306-8010, and that likely gives you a pretty good idea of where this video is going. So the 6306 movement is basically the JDM counterpart to the 6309 export movement. Um, it's, for all intents and purposes, uh, it's exactly the same. Uh, the dimensions are exactly the same. However, the 6306 includes four more jewels and a hacking lever. Let's take a look. So on this 6309, I went ahead and just uh, removed the auto wind mechanism and rotor so that you could see uh, the, the difference between the 6306 and the 7309 movement. Let's get a little closer there for a good look. Um, all right, so let's take a look first at the 6309 train wheel bridge. And as you can see here, um, for our escape wheel, we have uh, just a hole jewel there, um, pretty standard. And then we have metal hole, holes for pivot holes for the seconds wheel, the fourth wheel, and then the third wheel gets a, a metal pivot hole as well. Now, nothing wrong with metal pivot holes, but of course, if you have the option, uh, you may want to choose to go with something like the 6306, where we can see instead of just a plain hole jewel for the escape wheel, we get diafix shock protection, which is a hole jewel followed by a cap jewel and spring. And we also get diafix treatment for the third wheel, um, which had only a metal pivot hole before. And of course, going from a metal pivot hole to a jewel hole for the fourth wheel as well. Now through this hole, I don't think that you'll be able to actually see it, but there's also a hack lever so that when we pull the stem out to the time setting position, uh, it stops our balance so that we can uh, maybe synchronize our watch with someone else's watch or maybe against a, uh, a known um, time, like a, a atomic time or something like that, um, but to the second, which is a pretty big benefit, especially if you uh, need to know the exact time. 
Um, it's it's, it's a, a nice option to be able to have that second setting, but really just a quite an upgrade from the 6309 to the 6306. But our client, rather than uh, tracking down what can be a hard to find 6306 7000 or 7001 JDM turtle, decided I've got these two 6306 movements. Can we swap them into these two 6309 divers? And I have to say, this is the kind of modding that I can get behind. Of course, in the end, what we're left with is two completely all original Seiko watches with all original Seiko parts. Uh, just really nice upgrades to the movement. And of course, adding that Kanji Day as well as they are uh, JDM watches. Um, and I think that's uh, really kind of neat, you know, other than the seeing the kanji in the in the day window there you really wouldn't know that anything had happened to these watches at all that they'd been changed in any way in fact if we went back to the english in the day wheel there i have to say we pretty much have the ultimate uh sleeper seiko divers here so by changing out from the 6309 to the 6306 uh, we've really done a great job of upgrading these two watches and customizing them a bit without changing anything about them and i certainly think that that's really the best kind of customizing that you can do and with that said, now, is there anything that we could do to make these movements even better? Uh, well, technically, there is. So we know that these are now 21 joule movements, uh, but we could even upgrade them further to a 23 joule movement. Now, um, if you're familiar with these movements, a lot of the 61 series movements have metal bushings for the uh, arbors, for the arbor ports, uh, for the mainspring barrel, and they can really be troublesome, um, especially on watches that were were worn a lot through the years. Now, these two had very little wear, and there was no really discernible wear to the arbor ports on the train wheel uh, bridge side, and even the main plate, uh, really just sharp corners, edges, no real end shake for the mainspring barrels. Uh, but it's a it's a known quantity, it's a known issue that eventually uh, those metal bushings on the here, we'll take a look at it here. So these steel bushings uh, for the mainspring barrel arbor port, uh, they can wear and they uh, sort of get like a beveled edge to them, chamfered edge that allows the mainspring barrel to rock, uh, have in shake back and forth. And I've seen them so loose that the watch won't even run at all. Um, the, the barrel uh, is tilted so hard to one side after it's wound that it literally binds against the center wheel uh, and there's no movement from the watch at all so it can certainly be an issue and one that in recent years we've been able to fix as as i mentioned before adrian at vintage time australia has started offering uh jewel replacements for those steel bushings in the uh in the mainspring arbors i put one together so you guys could see so on the train wheel side uh, you can see what was a steel bushing before is now uh jeweled and that's really kind of an easy change to make. That steel bushing just pops right out of there uh, with a jeweling tool. Uh, you can press it right out. And then the, the new one is a seamless fit. It pops right back in. But unfortunately, we do run into a little bit of trouble on the main plate side. It requires some reaming to uh, to make the port a bit larger. And then, of course, having a countersink to chamfer the edge. And then you can press this jewel uh, into place as well for the lower arbor. Uh, but really, going from metal to uh, to jeweled arbor ports here does the same thing uh, as adding jewels to the third wheel and escape wheel on the other side. Uh, certainly just allows us to have no wear, very a, a lot less wear over time. These are not going to become misshapen or uh, ovular in shape or wear uh, chamfered holes into them. That's going to certainly keep that mainspring uh, where it's supposed to be and reduce in shake and keep it positioned uh, as it should be against the center wheel. Um, but this is something that we have started offering. If, if you have wear to your 6139s um, or 17s or 6306s and 6105s, this is certainly going to be a, a life-saving operation for some of those watches that may not be able to run otherwise because there are really not any replacement plates to be found. Certainly being able to repair the ones that you have are going to be the best option. But I really enjoyed doing this customized job. Uh, this is, as I said, this is the kind of customization I can get behind because we're not really changing anything about the watch, just improving its performance. Uh, and of course, the longevity, being able to keep it together and working for a much longer period of time than we could have before. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Please uh, like if you enjoyed it. And uh, you can also subscribe uh, to our channel. You can also join us over at Patreon, where $7 a month gets you access to exclusive content, comprehensive rundowns of all of our upcoming inventory, and more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.